Hello guys, welcome back to today. I'm going to be ranking the top five defensive cores in the NHL. Now, a defense core is a group of defensemen on an NHL team, and I tried on this list at least to make it a balance of offense and defense to make it hopefully an even playing field. So hopefully in this list we see teams that are awarded for both defensemen that can play defense and for defensemen that can play offense to create a good mix of teams here. Now before of course I tell you my top five, I want to hear from you guys. What are your favorite defense cores in the league and which are the best in the league? I want to know from you guys. But starting off the list at number five, I have the Columbus Blue Jackets. Now they've been building a solid foundation, not just in the forwards, but in the defense for quite a long time now. Now of course you gotta talk about my favorite player in the Eastern Conference and my favorite defenseman, Seth Jones. At age 23, he is just getting started. He got 57 points last season in 78 games, but I think Norris trophies are going to come for Seth Jones, of course being Texas born, I love seeing that. But he is that strong foundation and he is their number one guy and going to be one of the best defenders in the league going forward. And of course, you also got to talk about Zach Wierenski, who got 37 points last year in 77 games. He was one of the best rookies a couple of seasons ago, and at age 21, I think he is. He's a super young defenseman, but is already very, very good. I think the prime is right, ahead, right around the corner, and for Zach Wierenski, it's really the future is bright for him, and for the Columbus Blue Jackets, if they didn't have Seth Jones, he would be their number one guy, but those two guys in Zach Wierenski and Seth Jones are looking like America's future, and not just Columbus's. So they got two a one defenseman type players right there, and both of them aren't even at age 24. They're very, very young, and the best years are going to come from them in the next few years for Columbus. They really have prime years ahead of them, which is the best thing there. It's not like their guys, their top two defensemen are in their 30s and mid-30s. They're right in their prime, and they're right about to enter it. And it's not just those two superstars. They also got some solid defensemen around them. You've got David Savard, who got 16 points in 81 games, more of a two-way type guy, but it's still a very serviceable top four defensemen. You got Marcus Nudevar who had 23 points in 61 games. He's looking like a good offensive defenseman for Columbus for their future if he stays healthy and they still even pass that. They still got some great guys ahead of them. You got Ryan Murray who is not the greatest defenseman was drafted second overall but it's still a NHL defenseman for sure. Uh, he had 12 points in 44 games. Hasn't really hit his stride yet. It probably won't happen but he's still a decent NHL defenseman. You got Gabriel Carlson who played a few games last season at 14 games played with two points He's looking like a pretty solid prospect and arguably Columbus's best prospect. So for Columbus, Waller, Timmy Panarin might not be with the, with, for the future there. Walsh Rigorowski is questionable for their future. That defense is certainly rock solid, and that defense is going to be monstrous for the next few years, especially if they can continue to get some decent prospects there like Gabriel Carlson and continue to develop some guys around Seth Jones and Wierenski. But those two top guys are one of the best in the league and will continue to be that way as they're in their early 20s. So for Columbus, they've done a nice job in sending their defense for the future with Seth Jones, Zach Wierenski, Marcus Nuvaro and some other young guys. They're looking to have a great defense for quite a long time. Now at number four, I have the Winnipeg Jets, and they last season was really impressive on the defensive end, on the offensive end, of course, and the goaltending end, but the defense really did step up in a lot of key areas. You got the number one defenseman in Dustin Bufflin, who somehow got better at age 33 last season, had 45 points in 69 games, nice, but was very, very good last season in, in a pretty old era. So for Bufflin, he has obviously shown great things, and I don't know if he'll decline next season or the next season, but right now, he's looking to be Winnipeg's best defenseman all around. He can bring a lot of offense and, of course, a lot of physicality, as always. You got Jacob Truba, who at age 24 has one year left on his deal, so he might not be with the team long term, but in this next season, he'll be a fair, very good piece for them. He got 24 points in 55 games last season. If he stays healthy, I don't see why he can't be alongside of Dustin Bufflin and play very, very well. He's got a great two-way game, and is definitely among the league and one of the better young defensemen coming up. You got Josh Morrissey, who took big steps last season at age 23. He got 26 points last season. He was one of the top picks, I think, in 2013 or something like that. But he finally took that next step into becoming a solid NHL player. In this past season, we saw him really improve. I feel like it's going to be another great season from him, as we see him likely be an even better player next season. 
You got Tyler Myers, who at age uh, 28 is still a solid defenseman. I know I have some rise against him. He's got 36 points in 82 games. Very solid on paper stats. He's a solid defenseman and at a top six level. You can't be mad at that. Uh, you got Men Sherrod, who at age 27 had a pretty solid season at 14 points, 57 games played. He really didn't improve last season being from becoming a likely AHL or to a solid NHL defenseman. So last season, we saw a lot of these defensemen come up and play a lot better than what they were expected to be, especially guys like Ben Sherrod, Josh Morris, even the improved Jacob Truba, became a top two defenseman like we thought he could be. Some of these guys really started to develop and really started to build the team around them, and for Winnipeg, that's what they needed to happen. They still also got some solid prospects in the system and some solid young players in that defensive core, so I think that the solid of the future is there. Once the Dustin Buffalo era is over, I still think that there'll be some solid defensemen to overcome that, and they'll likely go into free agency sometimes, whether it's next year or the year after that. So the future is bright for Winnipeg Jets, and that defense is definitely one of the reasons why. They got a good mix, of course, old and youth, with Dustin Bufflin and guys like Josh Morrissey. So they got a solid future, and of course, we'll see some of the younger guys improve as well. At number three, I have the Carolina Hurricanes now. I know this is a little bit of a bold pick, but I have a lot of faith in this defense, and throughout the offseason, it got even better. This past season, of course, we saw the big trade of Dougie Hamilton and Noah Hannafin switching teams with the Calgary Flames, the Carolina Hurricanes, and for the now, this definitely does strengthen Carolina's defense for 2019. And don't get me wrong, Hennepin is a good player, but Dougie Hamilton is a definite upgrade. He played 82 games last season for the Calgary Flames, had 44 points, was an advanced stats beast, to be honest, and right now he's in his prime, and he's going to develop. He's going to really reduce the Carolina Hurricanes for next year, and for the next few years at least. You got Jakob Slavin, who is right in the middle of his prime at age 24. He got 30 points in 82 games last season. He's a very solid all-around defenseman, great defensive game, but also can produce very, very offensive, very, very greatly offensively. You also got Brett Pesci, who's also very, very good around him. They're both kind of similar players. Uh, Pesci got 19 points in 65 games at age 23. A little bit less offense, but still brings very, very good defense. Then you got Justin Falk, who honestly, the Carolina Hurricanes don't even need at this point, but he bring 31 points in 76 games last season at age 26. They're looking to trade him, and it really does uh, shine a light to how good Carolina's defense is, because they're willing to give up Justin Falk, and they're not even going into a rebuild mode. Justin Falk is a, okay, is a good defenseman. Offensively, he definitely is great, but defense is a little bit of a worry there, uh, but really, I don't think the Carolina Hurricanes need him, and of course, that's why they're trying to trade him. Of course, this past season, they signed Calvin DeHaan to a, I think, three-year deal at age 27. He got 12 points in 33 games last season. If he's healthy, he'll definitely contribute to the Carolina Hurricanes. And of course, you've got Hayden Fleury, Trevor Van Reems, like some solid depth, the guys right there. And the system, you got Adam Fox, Jake Bean, two guys that are looking to be future top four defensemen. So when you look at this defense, the oldest guy is, is age 27, and they're just going to keep cycling these prospects. They got some good prospects in their system when it comes to defense and in forwards, but really the youth is there, and it'll continue to get even more youth, especially if Justin Falk is traded, and especially if they keep going with that. This young defense is looking fantastic in a year or two. They could be the best defense on earth. I think they're on track to do so. So while their goaltending might be a little bit of a with Peter Morazic and Scott Darling, their defense is definitely set in stone to be one of the best in the NHL. And while I see them improving, not making the playoffs, but improving, the defense will be one of the reasons why, as I see them being very, very good once again. At number two, I got the Tampa Bay Lightning. Now, they're more of an offensive team when it comes to defense than, de than defense, actually. But I still think that their core going to the future, while older than some teams on this list, is still very, very good. Obviously, being number two, they have to be. Of course, you got the beast in Victor Hedman at age 27. He just won the Norris Trophy, getting 63 points in 77 games. That's their number one guy and a top five, top three defenseman even in the league. He definitely is their anchor and will be for the next few years at only age 27, he's right smack dab in the middle of his prime. Of course, you got Ryan McDonough, who they just got this past NHL trade deadline. He put 29 or points in 63 games. And this next season, I think he'll gel even more as, of course, he's locked up long-term with the Tampa Bay Lightning. I feel like he'll get more accustomed to the team as well, and we'll see even more points from him than we did last season. You got Mikhail Sergeyev, who at age 20 had a brilliant year, 40 points as a defenseman, and was one of the best young prospects in the game. Comes up and plays like one of the best rookies in the game. He's at age 20, dominating the, dominating 
defined really the league offensively. I think we'll continue to see him grow as well. Being one of the best uh, defensive prospects we've seen for a long time, I think that he'll continue to grow and blossom into arguably a top three offensive defenseman in the NHL. Of course, they got Anton Strelman, who's been a solid defenseman for them for quite a long time. At age 32, he's going to start declining, like we've already seen him as, but I still think he's a very solid uh, defenseman. Uh, he played 80 games at 18 points. Wasn't the best, but I still think he's a solid top four guy for the Tampa Bay Lightning and for most other NHL teams. Of course, you got the pairing of Dan Girardi and Brandon Coburn, two guys that kind of mesh together and feel like the same guy at times. They're not the greatest players. They're top six caliber type guys, I'd say, but they're really not going to contribute too much to your lineup every single night. Of course, you got their best prospect in Cal Foot, who is looking to be a solid top four guy for the future. A circuit chef Cal Foot line for the future in Tampa Bay would just be rock solid and amazing. And for them, he's not the best prospect in the world, but he's looking to be a very solid defensive prospect, which they don't really need him, but he's going to factor in the next couple of years. Now, of course, at number one, I wonder who it could be. At number one, I got the Nashville Predators. Now, this is the obvious pick here as they built one, not one of the best defenses in the NHL, but I think one of the best defense, of course, in possibly NHL history. It is just so stacked, and the team-friendly contracts that they have going into the future is just ludicrous. Of course, you got the number one guy in P.K. Subban, but you can't really call him a number one guy because he's alongside Roman Yosef alongside of Matias Ekholm, alongside of Brian Ellis. He really is not the number one guy there because there are so many other fantastic defensemen to go around him. But P.K. Subban getting 59 net points in 82 games last season was amazing as an offensive type guy. Really, he did have a good or better year, I think, last season. Defensively as well, he made improvements there. And offensively, he was still the P.K. Subban that we've known and loved for quite a long time. Of course, you got Roman Yossi, who could, who is a first line or a first defenseman for practically most other NHL teams. Uh, he got 53 points last season in 75 games, and in the playoffs, he wasn't the greatest defensively, but he still is an amazing guy offensively and brings that every single night as the captain of the National Predators. Of course, you got Ryan Ellis, who was sort of banged up last season, had 32 points in 44 games, was injured, but when he played was fantastic. And if you like that season, once he gets healthy, it'll be a great year for him as well. And then you got Matias Ekholm, who is arguably the one of the best uh, contracts defensively in the league. I think six more years or something like that at like four, almost $4 million. A sweetheart of a deal. He got 34 points last season in 81 games, but is amazing defensively as well. And of course, you got other guys. They just signed Dan Ham, who was this past season. They got Matt Irwin. And Anthony Boteto, but after that, it really does not matter because that top four will be chunking mega minutes and will be amazing throughout most of the game. And of course, you got one of the best defensive prospects in the game as well, and Dante Fabro looking to be a great solid top four guy for the future for Nashville, unless they trade him. But honestly, that decor is so, so stacked, and they're not really even that old as well. They're in their mid-20s. While they will start to get older and they will start to age, it won't come for likely a long time. But it's been fascinating to see how they developed this past defense. Of course, P.K. Subban in a trade, Roman Yossi, Ryan Ellis, and Matisse Eklund, I think all were developed throughout the national system, and they continue to develop guys as well throughout that, Dante Fabro being one of those guys. I feel like throughout that next future, throughout these next five years, they're going to be a serious contender practically every single year unless some stuff goes wrong. Which, let's be honest, under David Poyle, not a lot of stuff will go wrong, so I think they'll be very, very fine. So for Nashville, I think it's hands down the best defense in the game, but in four, three years, I think it'll still continue to be that way unless they get in the cap crunch or they have to move some players. I think that they've set it up for the future to where they don't really have to do anything. They have to keep that current defense going, and if they continue to play like they have into the 30s, it'll be a great defense for years and years to come. So, once again, I want to hear from you guys. What do you think about my top five and the teams I listed here? And, of course, what do you think about you? I want to hear what your own thoughts are. What team do you think has the best defense in the league? So, that's what I've heard, guys. If you guys enjoyed, make sure you like and subscribe. Again, I want to hear from you. What do you think about my list? And I want to hear from you as well. What defense is the best in the league? And I'll see you guys later. Goodbye.